everybody. Thanks for tagging in with us. We're going to be looking at baptism and uh, such an important topic within the church. And so we really want to think through what is commanded and what is not, right? And again, remember that just because it's something that's not commanded doesn't mean we shouldn't do it or that it's bad. It just means that we got to make sure that the things that are commanded are um, em- the, the main emphasis and the focus for us, that we want to make sure we're obeying him uh, and that's priority and that we aren't missing and, and losing sight of what he has commanded of us. So, Rob, what, when we talk about baptism, what is commanded and what is not? I mean, we'll, we'll kind of work through the knots as we go through this, but maybe you could kind of start us on that. Yeah, what is commanded that is that we baptize. You know, Jesus not only commands, but commissions us to go make disciples of all the nations and to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, but, you know, some of the traditions that are built around it is like, who can baptize? When should somebody be baptized? Some churches would say you have to go through a uh, catechism. That's not bad, you know, but uh, is there anything in Scripture that says you need to? Uh, so when should you get baptized? Some people would say, you know, the Ethiopian eunuch, they'll use that text and say, hey, immediately he was baptized. Others would say, no, that's not the way it should happen. But um, how baptism happens, what's said at the baptism, you know, the wording, do you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, like Jesus said, or do you kind of like Book of Acts, see baptize in the name of Jesus? A um, whole bunch of debates around this stuff. And I think sometimes even uh, the sinner's prayer, maybe you could talk about that a little bit, Sean. Yeah, you know, Rob and I, before this video, we were just chatting a bit about how it seems like the sinner's prayer can oftentimes take the place of baptism, right? You look at in Acts 2, uh, just to read it, um, you know, Peter's preaching and, you know, they ask him, what should we do? And Peter says, verse 38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Right? So this is kind of like altar call moment. People like hearing the gospel proclaimed and saying, all right, what, what do we do? And again, repent and be baptized. So repent of your sins and get baptized. Now, oftentimes what we'll do in Christianity today is say, hey, you know, close your eyes, bow your head, repeat after me. And then we kind of walk through some like uh, prayer that we call the sinner's prayer. Uh, You know, when I was a new Christian, I assumed that this was in the Bible somewhere because it got talked about so much. But then I started to notice that like each time somebody led the sinner's prayer was kind of different. I was like, wait a minute, is this like different translations or something? Like, why, why is this changing? Uh, and it took me a while to realize, okay, that's not actually in the Bible. Now, it's not that then, okay, teaching somebody how to pray to God when they're becoming a Christian is a bad idea. No, that's not the point. But the point is, it shouldn't be replacing what we see in Scripture, which is a call towards repentance and baptism. And so it, it can be very common in which somebody would, you know, at some sort of event, give their life to Jesus, be led in a prayer, and then two years later realize, oh man, maybe I should be getting baptized because nobody mentioned it to them. But that's like the first step of obedience in becoming a Christian is is baptism, um, this uh, you know beautiful sacrament, right? Um, and so, I guess you know, Rob, back to you a little bit on okay, so why? Uh, I guess some of these things that you mentioned, maybe we could press in on a little bit more. Some of these things are felt to be a really big deal. I remember also as a, a young guy in ministry, I remember asking a question to my superior in ministry, like, hey, why is it that only pastors are allowed to baptize? Like, can other people baptize? And 
I remember this person looking at me like, dude, you're about to be like stepping outside of orthodoxy. Like, what do you be quiet? Like, don't dare ask that question again. And there's just some assumptions around baptism. Uh, I guess, what are some of your thoughts on that? Like, as you think about some of the things you mentioned? Yeah. Um, I think it's because people do what they've seen done and it's kind of like you're saying, you ask that question and you're about to get your head chopped off or get thrown out. Um, there should be room to say, why do we do what we do? And why have we continued to do this for so long? And most people won't ask those questions. But for us, we, we don't see anything in scripture that says that, Sean, you wouldn't be able to baptize somebody. you know. And so whoever's discipling in We Are Church and leads somebody to the Lord, that's probably who's going to baptize that person. It's, we're not going to just have the pastor baptize. And that doesn't mean we're doing it right or that's the way you guys should do it. But it seems like if you're leading somebody to Christ and you're discipling them, that you would probably be the person to baptize them because you're taking spiritual responsibility and care for that person, almost like a parent. And so I think of it like the people that I've had the opportunity to baptize, I almost feel like a uh, kind of like a responsibility to care for them, you know? For the rest of their journey and some of them have actually walked away and you know are back in in walking in darkness and i'm like man did i mess up did i do the wrong thing by baptizing them i don't know but i still check on them and tell them hey man he loves you he's calling you to repentance um because there's something that happens there in that time where i'm actually caring for this person forever um but yeah and the other thing what was the other thing uh you know, when there's times when, you know, we've done it straight away and there's times when we've waited to see if it's genuine. Um, I don't think there's, I don't think either way is wrong. I think it's, you're going to need to be led by the spirit and what he's showing you in that time. Um, yeah. Those are a couple of things that just come to my mind. I don't know. Yeah. And so I think this is another topic kind of like, the previous video we did on the Lord's Supper where because we know it's such an important thing we want to there's a tendency to want to get very dogmatic on exactly how it's done um, as a way to attribute significance to that act and it's not a one for one that's what I was saying with the Lord's Supper that hey because we're very particular about how we do this that doesn't mean that we're taking baptism seriously. Uh, you know, we, we really have to be thinking biblically what, you know, what is baptism all about? Um, you know, especially as we're leading people to the Lord, I think there's something about baptism. Like you are, you are declaring in front of a group of people, I'm a Christian now. And in some countries, in, in other contexts, like that could cost you your life. And I think, you know, Part of baptism is us thinking about how we call people to faith in Jesus. It can't just be bow your head, close your eyes, slip up your hand, and repeat a prayer in silence. No, there is a public declaration of this decision. There's like a, a bold, like, I'm united with him, and I'm not going to like hide this thing. That's part of it seems like at the heart of baptism. Like in Romans 6, it talks about like a uniting with him in his death and his resurrection. And so that's, again, at the heart of baptism, it seems. And now people watching this video, you might go, hey, I don't, I'm not comfortable with how you guys are doing things. Or, you know, we really feel like it should be done this way. And there's room for that, right? There's room for, and that's really what we're saying, is there's things that are clear in Scripture. And then there's things that there's room to have disagreement on. And we love you guys. Like if you come to some different conclusions on how to go about it, if you go, Hey, we really think only pastors should be baptizing and here's our reasons. Like praise God. But hopefully you guys wouldn't be looking at us with judgment or us towards you based on something that's not clear in scripture, especially when you look at, I mean, Paul in Corinth, he says he only baptized a couple people. And so the question then is, who baptized the next people? Maybe somebody else like Apollos or Aquila and Priscilla are their leaders. 
but maybe not. Maybe Paul's having new believers baptize the next group. It, it's there's some assumptions we made about baptism and what it's supposed to look like that might not be actually very biblical. And so we got to be careful that we're not elevating those things. Um, so Rob, a- any final thoughts on this topic? Yeah, just kind of what you're hitting on already. How much division has happened in the church because we feel like we have it figured out, you know, when we land in a certain place, there's so many different denominations. There's so many different ideas that everybody thinks they're right. Um, but the one thing, one of the things that Jesus prayed for was unity in the body. And it's, it's, it's sad. I, I really believe it breaks God's heart when we start fighting and devouring each other, you know, because scripture says we'll be destroyed by one another. Um, so we have to be careful not to, again, what Sean's saying is, Let's not judge each other in this, but I know that there's freedom to do things differently. Yeah, that's good, right? Yeah, as you're saying that, I'm like, would do we really think that Jesus would want us to be dividing over like some of these things that we were mentioning? Some people maybe do think that Jesus would want us to be dividing over that. It just doesn't seem like it. Like there are things that we will divide over, um, and they're majors. They're things that are like super clear in Scripture. Uh, but things that aren't clear in scripture, gosh, we got to be so careful. Um, cause it can, you know, it's like in first Corinthians, don't go beyond what's written. There's this like pride and puffing up that happens when we go beyond what's written and we come up with our own ideas and get dogmatic on those things. Cool. Well, yeah, thanks Rob. And, uh, thank you guys for joining in with us. Hope it was helpful and we'll see you next time.